Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I took this room and turned it into an office for my husband using brick sheets from Old Mill Brick. Here's what you need for this project. I will include a supply list in the video description so that you have an idea of where to get all these things, what they cost. And I will also include a price breakdown in my video description as well so that you know how much this project cost me before you tackle your own project. In the beginning of this video, I didn't know what I was doing, so I purchased my brick corners and I knew that I needed to start in the corners of my room. If you don't have any corners, you can start at the top of your ceiling and work down so that you have a full brick at the top. But in my situation, I decided to work from the corners and out in each direction. I don't have too much video footage since I was just figuring this out as I went and I wasn't super confident really throughout the entire process. But now after finishing the wall, I definitely have learned a lot and am confident sharing what worked for me. So here you can see the corners are installed and then I worked my sheets out to the left, just using those full sheets and then got to the bottom and worked across removing bricks where there were outlets or other things in the way. So here's how I did it. I used a putty knife. I think this is a five inch putty knife. And then I used a two inch putty knife because I felt like I had more control. You can absolutely use your notched trowels smooth side for this. But since I had bricks underneath, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't dripping any adhesive. And then I came back and used my notched trowel to add those grooves to ensure that my bricks really did stick onto the wall. No need to be perfect. This is strong adhesive. And as long as there's a little bit of adhesive, those bricks aren't going anywhere. I stacked them in an alternating pattern and then used my tile spacers as a guide to space out where I was putting my bricks so that they lined up with the sheets that I was going to apply next to them. I ended up using the 1 8 spacers because not all of the grout lines were equal and this allowed me to use a quarter inch space if I needed to or even an eighth of a uh, gap if I needed to. Then working out I used the larger putty knife and a smaller one again to catch any adhesive that drips since my bricks were underneath and this adhesive did stain bricks if it got onto the brick face. So I wanted to make sure to be extra careful. And then I backfilled a little bit on spaces that needed a little bit more adhesive and then just smoothed it out. Again, you can see I'm not being perfect and I got more confident that it didn't have to be perfect as I went and I saw that these bricks were really secured on there. One thing to note with the brick sheets is that the sheets are not perfect. The bricks are glued onto a sheet of mesh and some are crooked. And if that bugs you, you may want to just use the individual bricks. But for me, the speed that these allowed me to move at made it worth it, even if some of the bricks were a little off. So the bottom left brick, you can see it's slightly angled down on the right, up on the left. And as I got further in the project, I realized that that really did add a lot of character. And in the end, you don't even notice the bricks not being perfectly even. I went through and added my spacers to make sure that they were placed correctly and just moved them if they weren't. So that was a little tight of an area. So I just worked my spacers in to make sure that they were even, pushed that area down. And then you can see that the brick is three eighths of an inch away, but it does kind of move up to the left. It will not affect my bricks going forward. You can see that they're level across and that's all I really cared about. At the top, I was super concerned about the bricks meeting on the other side. So again, if I didn't have these corner pieces, I would have started at the top and then worked my way across and then down, but it ended up working out great and they continued the brick pattern without a problem. So I just worked my way across the room using a putty knife and a spatula to apply my adhesive. You do want to protect your floors, so definitely lay down some plastic because I did drop a lot of adhesive during this process. Once you're done applying, then smooth it out and use your notch trowel to add those grooves. Fill any low spots and then apply your sheet. Now, like I mentioned, some of the bricks are super uneven. You can see in the upper right hand corner that brick was just driving me crazy. 
So I popped it off and then placed it back on just a little bit straighter so that it didn't curve up to the right. Added my spacers and quickly checked my level. I no longer could fit full sheets, so I just popped some bricks off and cut down my mesh so that I could fit some partial sheets and then used the extra bricks to cut down and fit in any gaps that needed a smaller brick. I used a tile saw for this, just a wet tile saw. I linked a different saw because I don't love this saw and the one I linked is a comparable cost uh, because this one didn't come with a blade. So I would recommend the other saw that I linked instead of this one. When the bricks come out of the saw, they are super straight and I decided that I wanted to file them down to give them a more tumbled look. I don't necessarily think this was worth it now having gone through and done it. I think it would have been fine if I left them straight because the grout really ended up covering up most of the straight edges anyway. So I didn't link to the filing stone, but if you want to smooth them out, you can. For your individual pieces, you can back butter them with the adhesive and then use the notched trowel to add the grooves on the back of them and then just stick them into place using your spacers. So the individual bricks were super satisfying to fill in all of the negative spaces. And once you're done putting all of your bricks up, you are ready to seal. So that took me several nights. I'll add a timeline of how long it took me in the video description. But I did end up sealing my bricks before the grout just to protect them a little bit from any grout haze. It's an optional step, so I'll link to that, but definitely optional. You do not have to seal them, but I decided why not? And here's how it looked after I sealed everything. So you can see all of my little cuts along the edges. And it looks like it's almost done, just needs some grout. And I was so happy with how the corner pieces turned out and around the window. I definitely would recommend doing a window seat if you can. To grout, I mixed up my grout and water mix to be a thick frosting consistency and then put it in a grout bag and squeezed it between all of the cracks of the bricks. I did have to move a little quicker than I wanted to because the grout does set up rather quickly. So I piped it in and then you can see what it looks like when it's piped in, it's kind of puffy. So once I was done piping in about a gallon size bucket, I would come back through and touch it with my finger to see if it was ready to be smoothed out. And if it looks like this, where you can press into it, kind of like a Play-Doh-y feel, then you can come back and smooth it out. So I used a glove to come back and smooth it out, which I will show you here. But you can also use a um, grout tool to smooth it out, to tool out the joints. But I thought that looked a little too perfect, so I decided to use a gloved finger. And here's a reminder of what the space started out as. And here is the final product. I know that wasn't a super in-depth tutorial, but I did want to show you kind of the tips and the tricks that I learned along the way, because I think it's super empowering to see someone like you tackle a project when they've never done a project like this. So I might not be an expert in bricking, but I am so satisfied with how the result came out, not knowing anything about anything going into this project. So. If you are apprehensive about tackling a project like this because you don't know what you're doing, I want to share with you my final results so that you can see. I had no idea what I was doing. I learned a lot along the way. I did make mistakes and I definitely feel like there's a gap in tutorials on how to do windows like this. So I was kind of just figuring it out as I went, but I'm so excited with how this turned out. So. I wish I had documented a little bit more, but if you have questions or comments, make sure to leave them and I will do my best to answer any questions that you have because I hope that this inspired you to take on your own project. So again, check out all of the links in my video description and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.